it's always me to you and welcome to my channel so today i wanted to just highlight one of the subreddits that i go to a lot um it's called r slash d trans and it, this was very interesting because i had saw this two days ago from user jj hey gay ftm and it really got me questioning what's going on with the medical field. So I would like to start out with what I had posted first. So uh, here we go. Uh, I was eligible. Okay, well, first let's start with the question. <laughs> How many of you started transitioning as minors slash had surgeries before 18 years old? And, you know, they're just collecting data for their video for YouTube and just wanted to hear about our experiences. Sometimes there's questions like that. And I, I'm going to be serious. There are a lot of, a lot of uh, comments, a lot more comments than I thought there were going to be. But what I said first is right here. I was eligible to start hormones around the first time I asked, which is true. I, the first time I ever even got a consultation um, wasn't even my actual primary doctor. It was just a question, <laughs> just like a, just a, just a question from a free clinic and a gender affirming doctor. I guess that's what you would call call him honestly he was very rude <laughs> there's so many stories i can tell about him but i was around 13 at the time uh i couldn't afford it and i well through my whole entire transitioning story i will say that during my time i never once talked <laughs> about it with my family at all honestly i kept it hidden and at the time they weren't paying attention to me at the time, so it was pretty easy. It was like a real double life, or a triple life really, because my school life was a little bit different too. So I couldn't get my parents' signatures for the double mastectomy that they also said that I can get. Though, at the time, my friend had a relatively easier time. Uh, she was emancipated. Uh, she got a double mastectomy at 15, and she started hormones the year before at 14. Uh, my other friend at the time was already on puberty blockers uh, when I met him at 15. And he said he had it for a couple years at that point, like uh, about two years. So when he started really at 13, um, then he started hormones at 16. Um, he ended up having, his insurance didn't cover it initially. He had switched over to the one that had better copay because he couldn't get something that fully covered it at the time. I will let you know that I am in the United States and uh, I was in the state of California, so I don't know. You don't, I don't know if that was a law then, but you don't technically have to tell your parents when you start. Um, sometimes there's like protection laws that you can get for that, so highly do not recommend. But I did have a question because I did... Um, Le uh, user Lynn Quint, she's a desist desisted female as well, and she had prompted her story, and I thought it was very interesting. She said, I began testosterone at age 15, but I only took one shot. It's what prompted me to de desist. Um, oh, I actually forgot to upload hers. <laughs> no, but, and then I asked a question, may I ask what it felt like getting testosterone? I'm assuming it wasn't pleasant since it made you desist. I'm curious because I haven't heard of a reason like that for desisting. Which I really haven't. Like, I, I don't hear too much about... I hear sometimes about, like, the nasty effects. But it never caused anyone that I've known or met to personally that was the reason of desisting. But Lynn Quint proceeds to say, there were other reasons as well, but the shot was my turning point. I think it was the combination of my binder starting to hurt more than usual, my lack of friends, and generally growing out of my gender dysphoria. The things that, are all, the things that always stood out to me, though, was how the nurse spoke to me. She would constantly say, you want this, or this will help you. It made me realize that the shot was 
indeed not what I wanted. And right on, I really commend her for that. And as I said, wow, that's good. You determined that for yourself. Uh, sometimes people will push through it despite the doubts. And also, it is quite tr- chilling. The nurse was saying, saying that. It's a definite red flag. My doctor and nurses were quite harsh as well when it came to that. Uh, it really is like a, it, it definitely gives me cult vibes, which is funny because I was really into like a lot of cult stuff at the time because I found it fascinating that people get sucked up in that. Mm. And Lynn Quint proceeds to say, yeah, it's really scary to think about what could have happened if I didn't snap out of it. My mom was 100% for me transitioning. I also remember my endocrinologist saying that out of her 10,000 patients, only two stopped taking HRT. I didn't believe that for a second. (sighs) Okay. And then I proceed to say, oof, that's terrifying. It's like knowing you're on a conveyor belt towards an incinerator, but everyone is cheering you on to stay. It's oddly eerie that almost... never mention the potential effects or consequences if not taken seriously. Plus, the immense support makes it seem like the best decision. Truly and utterly sinister. Good for you for standing up for yourself and not forcing yourself to stick through that. You have a good head on your shoulders. And Lynn Quint says, uh, Thank you. I'm glad you got out of it as well. It's, it is really vile for what the medical industry is doing to children. And lastly, I replied with, Yeah, it's never okay trying to harm children and lead them into something harmful without letting them know the consequences. Suddenly, children who can't give consent for the majority of life decisions can make life-altering choices while being encouraged and told there are no downsides. Which is utterly bone-chilling when you really think about it. Because I was not told many of the effects. If I wasn't into uh, the medical field myself and I wasn't into doing my due diligence and learning things, I mean, I really could have been led astray if I really was in that vulnerable state and I just put my trust in things, people that I just don't know and don't have my best interest. Um... (laughs) Let's see. Uh, the underscore reaper underscore reaps had my tits cut off at 15. <laughs> and then JJ Gay FTM. Are you from the ES? Yeah. Like, she she's definitely just nicely blunt about it. Um, this one was interesting because, um, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are going to find it hard to believe that someone can come out at three years old. But... Here we go. This is user Dillinger Financial. I don't know why they got negative down, not uh, negative votes. Um, I don't know why someone would downvote it. Like, I don't know, but maybe. Um, is it a she or a he? Uh, it's a he, I believe, because it has the little male symbol. Uh, came out at three, started HRT at 24. I believe, never could get approved for the surgery. I'm in the U.S. Uh, Suddenly Fishing, also a D-trans male, I believe. Um, Do your parents happen to be LGBT? I'm curious because 3MC is a little early to be able to comprehend that and come out. Mm. I do find, like, Suddenly Fishing does make a good assumption because that is really odd. I mean, I personally... Uh, I can get into that on another video, but I think sometimes for children or just people in general, if you believe in something for so long, you start to, I guess, assume that you've thought of this your whole life, it seems. So, maybe, maybe not. But uh, Dillinger Financial proceeds to say no my parents were born in 1943 father and 1944 mother to my knowledge my father hadn't even come to terms with accepting people of other races fully by his death much less lgbt people my mother didn't accept it though for sure she is still alive for the most part 
coming out wasn't necessarily saying I'm trans. Had never even heard of that terminology before. Uh, well, that would make sense because I don't know if the word became colloquial until the 50s or maybe that's just when the first big case came out um i was just starting how i was just stating how i felt in my body i didn't think i heard the term transsexual we didn't use transgender then until i was around 19 and sun fishing replies with interesting thanks for replying and sharing that i know sexual feelings come up at a young age for me, I first started being sexually attracted to girls when I was probably four or five. So that makes sense. And then Dillinger Financial. See, that it was where it was a bit odd for me because I still became attracted to girls around at around six or seven. I even did a silly thing where I'll pick one girl in my class each year to have a crush on and I would never tell because I was a little coward. Up until about sixth grade. After sixth grade, I was sure I was involved in dating, if you can call it that at the time, in ninth grade. I knew something was up, so I did attempt dating a boy. It didn't work out. Then I just realized that I'm not into men. All is well, I have three kids now and I'm extremely happy in my relationship. I honestly couldn't ask for a better wifey. I love her more than the sun and the moon and the stars, including the sun, of course. <laughs> Which is very beautiful. And Sudden Fishing goes to say, That's so awesome to hear. I'm glad things worked out for you. And it sounds like you and I have a lot in common. That's my biggest goal, to start a family like that and just love and, and be loved. I'm so happy for you. Which is very touching. I like it. Um, I will say, though, uh, when it comes to liking... I was a bit of a late bloomer, and I don't find that too terrible. Although, I did have to come to terms with actually liking guys, um, <laughs> because I, I was very in denial. I was really just like, no, 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 because, I mean, all I could think about was girls for as long as I can remember, and now you're telling me guys i mean i literally had to pretend that i did like guys by pretending that they were girls in my mind so then i didn't appear like a weirdo in front of other people <laughs> like uh. but then around 17 um i'm only 20 so it's just like i i just when i mean i came to terms with it i mean like i just came to terms with it and it took me about three years to acknowledge that I can actually, like, it was my first breath of life of thinking, yeah, I could be with a guy. Okay. Like, for real, not just faking it. Then, I still didn't want to admit it to myself, even, until just around my 20th birthday. So, I think that that's something that does happen. And I see that in a lot of posts. I might make another video about the, the trans uh, subreddit. Because that is a very big thing in the community about just admitting that... Even just admitting that you can be not just a homosexual or, you know, you're a tomboy or uh, a feminine like man or you just like feminine things it's just coming to terms with yourself and accepting yourself for who you are like that is a big crux in <laughs> which comes with this and i guess that makes sense um let's see oh this person had deleted their this user had deleted their um uh, name or whatever but I'm glad they didn't delete their post because I thought it was interesting because they had told the actual hormones that they took they took spirolactone estradiol and progesterone at age 17 and then was scheduled for a vaginoplasty at 17 and planned to get it at 18 but ended up canceling the surgery <laughs> 
Uh, I think there was another person like that, and they ended up just being, <laughs> they just felt like, yeah, I don't feel like it. I liked it. Um, this one was interesting, too, by Wea Bolton. Wea Bolton Squid. I think that's how you say their username. But hormone blockers at 16 and a half, and then testosterone was 17 and a half for like eight months. And then after that, hormone blockers again for one and a half years. Which, comfortable code 5235. Who the hell prescribes puberty blockers at uh, blockers at 18 years of age? Um, and she actually, uh, Wea Bolton actually gives the. I, I like to see what these people what people use. Um, it's Trenitone. Now I've actually heard of this, and yeah, it, she says it's for women with extreme endometriosis. And it is actually fairly common. I looked it up. I thought that was interesting because I did not know that was used for a hormone blocker. Like, I thought it was just to treat for extreme endometriosis. So, that was actually something interesting to learn about. <sighs> like, you know, what's crazy though. And then, oh, I thought this was a good one to uh, go with, too. By D-Trans is, uh, she's a D-Trans female. She says she transitioned medically and socially as a minor. She started testosterone around 14. No surgeries, though. Surgeons refused to perform them back on, then on anyone under 18, sometimes even 21. Which is... <laughs> quite interesting because you'll start to see a leap really quickly like with the younger generation versus the slightly older generation and you'll notice like things just completely took a turn really quickly fairly fairly quickly I mean my goodness I know that science and medical fields are always changing but I mean, to work on a minor so young with such relatively new technology. I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it's fairly interesting. It's fairly interesting. So Dillinger Financial, who I read about just a few moments ago, says, right? And where are these kids coming up with the money for the top surgery? Because you'll see a lot. Um, I don't have TikTok, but my, <laughs> um, my, uh, page on YouTube like I'll get like a lot of recommendations because I'll be interested in the topic and like they'll send me things and I'm like okay and there's all these compilations of literal just children getting these double mastectomies or you know getting planned for a hysterectomy and just so many things like oh my goodness it's crazy like a lot of them okay and then spam central um, question a while, but didn't end up transitioning. Ugh, lucky. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty lucky, too. I'm just a D-sister, but, like, <sighs> glad. Just, just never take the plunge, because a lot of these, like, the D-trans subreddit can sometimes get very depressing, because, um, very uplifting, too, but just, my goodness. Um, a lot of them are still on their parents' insurance plan. If their parents have good jobs, they often allow children to stay on the plan until they are 23 years old. Sometimes 19 of the insurance company slash state has different rules, though. Which is interesting because uh, on my mother's health insurance for her job, technically, um, it allows for her children... Like, as long as, if I don't get married before the age of 26, I can technically stay on her, on her health insurance, which is interesting. So, if the company slash state is also liberal, more likely you can get trans health care coverage, which I have heard. There are new things where you can just, like, new jobs, like, especially if you live in places like, you know, really really liberal like you know california for example because i know that one um more in depth because i used to live there like trans healthcare coverage is absolutely insane when you think about it because 
I mean, what? <laughs> and it, you can cover it for the whole family? I mean, it really depends on the company, but it's just insane that it even exists. And then Dillinger Financial. Damn, I wish I could have. I had TRICARE and VA Medicaid, though. That's wild, though. I've been fighting for a long time to try to get anything, and I'm not even trans anymore. I'm in the eyes of medical insurance, though, for sure. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, that's the real big thing. Like, something as, um, in my opinion, <laughs> insignificant as trans healthcare coverage. I mean, ugh, wouldn't it be nice to, like, I, speaking of TRICARE, I used to have TRICARE. And, <laughs> oh my god, did they ever try to not care about me? Like, it sucked. Uh, I mean, just awful, awful insurance. Most of the time, just stiff you all the time. Like, just all, all the time. All the time. <laughs> like, I definitely pro-medical insurance. Like, <sighs> no one wants to pay these big, giant bills for no reason. Okay, and D-Trans is. Insurance cover it, covers it. If not, they are running funding campaigns and trans groups are raising money to support trans youth. Which is also a very, very, very big problem. Very lucrative, too. Very big problem. <laughs> it's just... Uh, to be in support of child mutilation is sickening. Um, a lot of these... A lot of these people, like... You see a lot of 15, 16... Oh, there we go. Total address, 4630. I started... Uh, tra I started testosterone at 16 and almost had top surgery around the same time but was too lazy thankfully yeah <laughs> i thought that was funny because honestly there were some times i would miss appointments <laughs> to go to my nice indoctrination brainwashing camp i like to go to to tell me that i need to raise some more money <laughs> so i can mutilate my body thank god i didn't but there were some times i was like i'm too busy or uh, I was just like, I don't want to go. Like, I'm lazy. I'm lazy for that. Like, I'd rather watch a uh, paint dry than sit there and hear that same rhetoric. I guess I was already falling out of love with it at that time. But, yeah. <laughs> if, that, if that isn't the most teenagery thing I've ever, <laughs> like, I've ever related to and hurt and really understood. Um, yeah, like, 16... Uh, Moz 13, 13, 13. Ugh. And then top surgery immediately after turning 18. Like, estrogen at just turning after turning 17. Like, JJ and Angel, I kind of understood a little bit. Because she says that she had to wait until she was 18 because she knew her parents wouldn't consent to it. But was fixated on wanting testosterone since the age of 14. See, being... It's not even really, like... I need it. No, it was more of just, it's like an obsession. It's just this thing that gets hammered in your brain. Like, you just really need it. And it's not good, especially when you have gender dysphoria. And, <sighs> um, I thought Kick Bugs was pretty interesting with her response because she started trans testosterone a week after she turned 18 but it would have been 17 if the doctors weren't concerned about her history of migraines before proceeding with hrt <sighs> they told her to get on migraine mates meds and then come back <sighs> and you know she just wishes that she would have taken that as a warning and backed out it's a real yeah a sunk cal a cost fallacy and i really do like enjoy that she even had to say that though like ugh. yeah some of these people like waiting list um there's a person that said they were from australia i believe yeah okay dog yuck puberty blockers at 14 testosterone at 15 top surgery at 17 and that was in australia so it's not just happening in the u.s which i assume that most of these people are from um it's like it's it's in a lot of places. It's it's really, it's really, really crazy. I mean, Girl Dog started testosterone at 14, and then two years later, top surgery at 16. I mean, that's crazy. Like, you're just at the, barely at the end of your development. 
And then, oh, I actually, yeah, I saw this. This is what made me want to do this video. Uh, fish water drinker one day ago. Socially trans regrets entire transition, which is a lot of us. So, I'm not sure... If this is a guy or a girl, but okay. So, fish water drinker came out when I would just say he because I, I don't, I actually don't know, and I don't want to keep saying I, <laughs> or maybe I, or maybe I should just read it like, like it is. Came out when I was 12 to 13, maybe less than, maybe six or less months later, got testosterone from. From only one quick visit from the trans specialist because the therapist I was seeing didn't want me to give it give it to me yet. Keep in mind I haven't had any therapy or gotten into my anger problems or depression. The doctors didn't explain what half the side effects were. Just take this paper and read about these life changing complications. Never mind that I didn't understand what half of them meant. The doctor said I might have autism or something because a lot of trans people do. They did not even test me for it. Just straight away from li with life-altering drugs. Which, that is a really big thing now. Like, I noticed... <sighs> I've never gotten tested for autism. Even if I do have it, I... <laughs> it's just like, I've made it this far. I'm doing just fine. <laughs> it's just... Um, but I do notice that. There's like a lot of people that find out like oh I have you know autism or you know uh, ADD ADHD and <laughs> I didn't know I couldn't comprehend what they were trying to say and uh, they were just throwing all these big complicated words and they didn't tell me everything and then they just expected me to all right now <laughs> and it's just it's amazing like oh poor thing now, let me continue. Now, two and a half years later, I decided to stop because of fear of dying or hurting from possible side effects. But I also stopped feeling trans. I went under to have my wisdom teeth taken out. After I woke up, I didn't see the need to be trans. <sighs> wow. <laughs> wow. And that's a lot of... That's very interesting because... I mean, gender dysphoria usually does not last forever and most of the time the best thing to do is just let yourself grow out of it <laughs> just you know it may seem like it's really agonizing at first but it's not gonna be forever now let me continue i haven't told anyone about these feelings to D-trans, but over time I plan to become more feminine and hopefully people will just realize I'm a woman. Okay, she is a girl. I thought so. There's a lot of D-trans women in the community. So. <laughs> but my first instinct is always to say he if I don't know. Like, I don't I don't know why. That's just something that I do for some reason. But a lot of my family is extremely woke and gay crazy. So who knows if they'll start referring to me as a girl again when I start to present as one that is <sighs> and that's very unfortunate I didn't have to go through that with my family but I did end up losing almost all of my friends like well I guess I still have one or two that's about it and they didn't even know that I was <laughs> so they also didn't know because I, I really just kept it like the ones that were, like, woke and gay crazy and very in my face about it were very happy that I was transitioning. And then I was seen as a <laughs> as someone that betrayed them and so on and so on. <laughs> and that I'm not, I was, you know, just faking it or whatever. Mm. So I do understand, which is... A really another common thing I see in the D trans subreddit that people some people will stay trans just because they don't want to lose their friends or family or you know romantic partners and that's terrible. Like 
That's why I find it really akin to a cult. Ugh. But let me finish what she has to say. And when I was trans and asked about surgeons who will do top surgery for minors, they gave me a list of surgeons who could do it. Luckily, I didn't, and my parents didn't have the funds. I thank God every day. I didn't get any surgery and got out of this with only two years of hormones. Hopefully, I won't experience complications down the line from taking those drugs. Hope this helps your question. And I think that that pretty much solidifies, like, that's intense. That's very intense. Just imagine. And then her parents were on board. Just imagine, like, you get a list of surgeons who are able to do this, <laughs> to do top surgery, to get your breasts removed. And really, if <laughs> her parents had the money, she would have had her breasts removed. Like, that's crazy. <sighs> and, oh, punk underscore NB underscore Felicity. Mm, the trans female. She started testosterone when she was 16. Then she had top surgery at 18. And then, proceeding the next year at 19, she had a hysterectomy. Which is tragic. Oh my god. And this is where... And she begins to say that she felt that even though she was a legal adult for the surgeries... There should have been more scrutiny given the fact that I was had adjusted to being trans as a developing teen. So it would have been a big deal in my life to change my mind and my eyes. And I really think that is very important because 19, 18, that's ridiculously young. And really, to be honest, with life-changing, unnecessary surgeries... I think you should wait until at least 25 because at 25 at least your brain is fully developed okay at least you can have be like oh you know you've been an adult for a fair amount of time and now you're making these decisions I don't know I kind of fumble back and forth with it but I really do wish that there was a little bit more pushback from doctors you know and you know psychologists and therapists and just all these counselors that just immediately affirm everything and never even try to tell you even the downsides. But that's all I had to talk about today. And um, I think I'm done here. Um, let me know. Do you have any detransitioning stories or anything? Um, I might make a few more videos about the detrans subreddit. I really do enjoy the subreddit. There is a couple really good ones that <laughs> deserve more attention. Uh, have a nice day. Um... Me. I'm so dope that these hoes gotta binge watch